Hey, Shalom. I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Mukakudash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Mukakudash, and peace and blessings on to the elect of the nation of Israel, which is us, so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We make up the biblical 12 tribes. To the nation of Israel. Okay, and I, I got a quick lesson I want to go into, and it's, it's dealing with a, a basic, you know, the basics, which is uh, sal who salvation is for. Salvation is only for the nation of Israel. Now, you have, uh, when you read the New Testament, uh, more in particular, you we run across the word uh, Greek. We run across the word Gentile. We run across the word, uh, I believe, stranger. Maybe, I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the so-called, when we run across those words, uh, us that know that we're Israelites, okay, for the most part, from what I, what I mean by the, the most part is most of the alphabet groups, you know, whether it's GMS, uh, I U I C G O uh I'm sorry not G O C C uh I S U P K and uh it's others out there. I believe H O D C and A O I and there's a lot of different alphabet groups. Uh we all know that we're Israelites and uh for the most part we all teach that salvation is only for the nation of Israel, but you have uh people out there like a uh, good example is I believe he go by Brother Lahab right now. I'm not, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, but I know back in the old school, uh, I believe he went by High Priest. His title was High Priest uh, Lahab, right? And uh, he teaches that salvation is not only for the for the Israelites, but they also for the Gentiles, meaning the other nations. All right. So when we run across the word Gentiles or Greeks in the New Testament, and it's dealing with salvation or concerning salvation uh obviously it would have to be talking about the israelites and like i said i have some uh i have uh, some scriptures really i'm gonna just read in, in roman mainly in romans the third chapter and uh it's an excellent scriptures to show that salvation is only for israelites and that those gentiles that are allotted salvation are also Israelites. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm gonna we'll start right here at uh, Galatians four and four. It says, "But when the fullness of the time was come, the Most High sent forth His Son, or it says God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law." Then the fifth verse says, "To redeem them." that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons so it, this verse right here clearly tell you that salvation for the ones under the law this is in the new testament this is a uh, paul paul epistle to the uh, the church of galatia all right now if these galatians are you know because in the so-called christian church Oh, well, like I said, I use, uh, I believe we go by Brother Lahab. I'm not sure. Um, he teach that salvation is for the, for Gentiles and Jews or I Israelites. And then, in the, of course, in the wacky tacky so-called uh, or wacky tacky so-called Christian church, they did. They deal with Christianity. They believe that salvation is open up for everybody as long as you believe. Right. So if the Galatians were actual Gentiles. Right. That Paul was preaching salvation to. Why would he tell them um, this right here in Galatians four and five? Why would he say to redeem them? That were under the law. That we might receive the adoption, the adoption of sons. So the redemption or the salvation is for the ones that were under the law. The only ones that were under the law were Israelites. Okay. Now from there. 
I want to go to uh, Romans, the third chapter, and I'm pretty much just going to read. I'm going to start from the ninth verse and I'm going to read through the uh, through the rest of the chapter. OK. So through these these verses, I want to examine particular verses. Right. Because I don't want to spend too much time, you know, reading all of this, but it's a it's a good reading. So let's get into it. Romans three and nine. It says, what then are we better than they? Meaning are the Jews, I believe, uh, yeah, the Jews, are the Jews better than the Gentiles? Now, somebody will read this and think that it's talking about uh, Jews, which are Israelites, and then the Gentiles will be other nations, other race or group of people, okay? But these Gentiles are actually talking about Israelites that were in a Gentile state of mind. And as we read down, that's, that's the only conclusion you can draw from this particular verses that we're going to read. Okay. Is that these Gentiles would have to be Israelites. Okay. The Israelites that lost their, their heritage. Okay. Through mainly through the, uh, at this particular time through the Greek, uh, captivity, right? So let's read on. It says, uh, what then are they? Oh, I'm sorry. Are we better than they No, in no wise for we have. I'm sorry for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Now, let's examine this verse, you know, and just pick out certain parts of this verse to examine. It says, for they are all under sin. He said, the Jews are under sin and the Gentiles, they all under sin. Well, in order for you to be under sin, you would have to go. We have to go back to Galatians 4 and 4. The Lord came to redeem them that were under the, under the law. Which means in order for you to sin, you have to be under the law. OK, because what is sin? Let's get it. We got to we got to understand what sin is and we know what sin is. But the wacky tacky Christians don't know what it is. And then you got certain Israelite groups that got their heads stuck up their ass, you know, that the most high is really just not dealing with. Uh, that believe that these other nations, these Gentiles are talking about other nations. So let's get sin. Uh, first John three and four. It says, uh, you know, and this is the, the basic. This is milk right here. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is breaking the law. OK. Now, let's go back to Romans uh, three. In the ninth verse, and we looking at the we're looking at the last part of the verse, where it says Jews and Gentiles that they all are, are, are all they are all under sin, right? So in order to be under this under sin, you have to be under the law. The law was not given to any other nation but the Israelites. Let's prove it. The only first law, the only way you could sin is by breaking the law. The only way you can break the law, the law will have to be given on to you. All right. And let's see who the law was given to only. Right. So this is Psalms 147 and eight. Uh, I'm sorry. In uh, 19, it says he showeth his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation and such as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Okay. So nobody, no other nation has known the laws except for who? The Israel, the, the law, statutes and commandments of the most high. No other nation has known them. See, now let's uh, go back to Romans. We just left off at three and nine. Let's read on. 
It says, as it is written, there is none righteous. OK, no, not one. And uh, none righteous amongst who? None righteous amongst the nation of Israel. Let's look up this word righteous right here. And I'll let the blue letter pronounce the uh, the word, the Greek word. Strong's G, 1342. Dikaios. Dikaios. And when we look at it, so I'm not even going to go deep into it. Well, I'll read a little bit into it. It says righteous, observing divine laws. See, we're going into the law. So righteousness goes into the law, keeping the, the law perfect. Or righteousness is the uh, is the law. It says. White sense upright. How do you be upright? By keeping the laws. How do you are you righteous, virtuous, keeping the commandments of God? See. So let's go back. And so in order to keep the commandments, you have to know the commandments. We just read in Psalms 147 that none of the other nations have known the judgments of the heavenly father. See, so let's read on. It says there is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after the most high. They are all gone out of the way, out of the out of the way of what? Out of the way of the law, statutes, and commandments. It says they are together become become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongue, they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are destruction and misery are in their in their ways and the way of peace. Have they not known there is no fear of the heavenly fall before their eyes or before it says God. But we know that's talking about the most high. It says now we know. That what things soever the law said, it said to them that are under, under the law. You see. I'm going to read that again. Now we know that what things so wherever the law said, it said to them that are under under the law. OK. So the law is 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 uh, pertains to the Israelites. So the law is speaking to the Israelites because they are under under the law. OK. And if you break the law, you sin, you commit a sin. It says that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before the most high. Now, let's look up this word world. In uh, Romans 3 and 19. Okay. Now if we go to this. You know because it's wacky tacky Christian to read this. Or the unlearned would read this verse. And then they'll think it's talking about the whole entire world. Well, so now we go to the word world right here. God dog it. Yes, we go to the word world and look what we have. Strong's G, 2889, Cosmos. 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 Okay. And, uh, and what is it? An, an app and harmonious arrangement or con uh, stitu constituish. Okay. Constitutes, const, I can't, that's a hard word for me to pronounce. So, like it, forgive me. Uh, let me get it right. Constitution, con, constitution, so like it. it says, uh, constitution, so like it. should know that word. Uh, order, it says, government, all right. Um, uh, ornament the arrangement of the stars the heavenly host and uh that's really that's the that's what it's talking about in a harmonious arrangement a constant particular group 
of people under an order, the law, statutes, and commandments. All right? Now, I want to show something real quick before I go back to Romans, the third chapter. Uh, so right here, we go to the Etymology Online Dictionary. Okay, so like it, this is something else. Uh, that icon looks similar to my, okay, here we go. So let's type in order. We read in, uh, for the word world in Romans 3 and 19, it went back to the word, the Greek word cosmos. And one of the definitions said order. So if we look up. Okay, if we look up the noun, because it's a verb a noun, if we look up of the of order, check this out. It says body of persons living under a religious discipline. See? Order, position of state, rule, regulation. So check that out. A body of persons living under a religious discipline. The Israelites living under the discipline uh, of the law, statutes, and commandments that were given unto us through the hand of, uh, by the Most High, through the hand of uh, Moses. Right? So we're going to go back to Romans 3 and 19. So right here, it said, I'm going to read the whole verse. It says, now we know that what things soever the law said is said to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world. So that word world is not talking about the whole world. It's talking about the world of Israel, the ones that are under the law. OK, which no other nation have known. It says, may become guilty before the Most High. It says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin, which all pertains to Israelites. They're the only one that had the knowledge of the law to have knowledge of sin because we kept breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. Right? So reading on, it says, but now the right It being by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Shabbat unto all and upon all them that believe. Yeah, amongst the Israelites, both Jews and Gentiles, the Gentiles being Israelites that lost their identity. Right? It says. Yeah, uh, upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, right? It's no difference from the Israelites that grew up knowing they were Israelites, raised in the law at this particular, going back to this time period, okay? And then the Israelites that lost their heritage and grew up in Asia Minor and in uh, Rome and other parts of uh the known world at that time, okay, that that uh that really for the most part the ones that went through the uh, Greek captivity and lost their way through the uh, by the way of the Greeks, uh, and more in particular by through the hands of uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, okay. So let's see. It says. Verse 23, it says, for all have sinned. In order to sin, you have to be under, under the law. Okay? You have to have knowledge of the law. Knowing that none of the other nations, according to Psalms 147 and 19, known, knew the law. Okay? It says, for all have sinned, meaning all who? All the world of Israel. And come short of the glory of the Most High. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption 
that is in Mashiach Yahawashai, whom the Most High has set forth to be propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. Okay, in other words, the forgiveness of sins. But in order for your sins to be forgiven, you'd have to bro be broke the law. You would have to have knowledge of the law. The other nations didn't have knowledge of the law. So it's impossible for the other nations to to uh, to sin. They didn't have a lot of they couldn't break the laws because they didn't know the laws because the laws wasn't given to them. It says for the for the remission of sins that are that are passed through the forbearance of the most high to the his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh Shai. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded? By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And I'm not going to get into the break. You know, this is not to go in. This lesson is not about proving that so called Christians are read these verses too towards the end of this chapter. And they'll say that, see, the law is done away with. Okay? But the point for the the, the points that I want to go into for this lesson is the fact that salvation is only for the Israelites and those Gentiles that we read about in the New Testament are Israelites. Okay? That that the, those Gentiles that are gonna receive salvation. Right? It says, um, is he the, the, the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? These Gentiles are Israelites. How do we know that they're Israelites? Because if we go back up, and a lot of the precepts can get brought out, but I want to stick and stay in this chapter and, and, and show right here in this chapter that these Gent you would have to draw the conclusion that these Gentiles would have to be uh, Israelites. Now, where does, let me see. All right. Uh, going up here looking for the verse. Okay, so like yeah, I had to go all the way back up to Romans nine. I'm sorry, three and nine. So sorry for that that a long pause. But going back up to uh, Romans three and nine, it says, "What then are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have uh, not proved. I'm sorry, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles." that they are all under sin. So these Gentiles, in order for them to be under sin, they would have to be under the, under the law, which means they would have to have knowledge of the law. Psalms 147 and 19, it says that the other nations have not known them, right? So let's jump back down to where we was at. Uh, verse 20. Nine Romans three and twenty nine. Be the God of the Jews only, and it got a question mark there. The answer is no, because Jews are only really one tribe, which was 
three tribes were classified up under the, the title of being Jews, which was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Is uh, is he not also of of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, which these Gentiles are, are Israelites. All right, because going back up to Romans three and nine, they were uh, it was concluded that Jews all were under sin, Jews and Gentiles. See. It says, seeing it is one power, one God, we shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. See? And uh, the uncircumcision is equated to the ones not keeping, uh, keeping the laws. I believe we find that in the second chapter. Romans, the second chapter. Okay, yeah, Romans 2 and 26, it says this. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the, the righteousness of the law. Hold on, let me go up. Okay, verse 25, Romans 2 and 25, it says, For circumcision verily profited, if thou keep. So what makes you circumcised? The law. Okay, it says, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. So those uh, Gentiles that we read about in the New Testament, they didn't, they weren't born and raised in the law. So they were breakers of, they were breaking the laws. So they were considered uncircumcision or the uncircumcision. So now going back to Romans three, uh, and I'll just read. I said I was gonna read the whole verse. I mean the whole chapter. So let me just finish right here. Romans three and thirty one. Do we then make void the law through faith? Uh, Yahweh forbid. Yea, we establish the law. And uh, that, that listen, you know, I just read those last verses just to read them. Uh, but Lord willing, this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the spirit. Okay. And uh, once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit, and peace and blessings unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom.